fact that uh, you know you got really badass guys featured on Boondock to talk about their records. And then you, you're the only person who's ever had Q Strange and Esham on the same track. Can you give us a little details behind how that came together? That, that one was done more for me, man. Like. Long time ago, I've determined that features are not done to sell albums and shit. I mean, six shit sold just as much as any of my releases and has zero features. Um, I did that track because I grew up on both of their music. I'm a huge Bichon fan, I'm a huge, huge strange fan. I wanted to make this happen and shit. I worked with both artists over the years and I suggested the track to track happen and I'm really pleased with what we came up with hopefully if we can get everybody fucking in the same building again because I've only done one show with both of them and myself on the same bill um, hopefully we'll get a video done for it yeah man that would be a badass video man. you know Eshawn spitting some classic wicked shit Q Strange De Devil came game. out good man it really it brought back some old school Eshawn flavor some Black Devil shit you know Q came with what Q does and shit. I, I, I really want to see another horrorcore Q Strange album. I mean, if he's watching this, I want another horrorcore Q. I need another creation to execution in my life before he retires. <laughs> return to Strangeland, Strangeland in general. And who would you say on your record label is like just killing right now? LSP in general. Currently and shit. It's hard to say. Everybody has been putting in work. I mean, since Small just came out with a really dope EP, and I mean, with all the obligations she's got in personal life, she is on the road. She's out here representing and shit. Liquid is fucking about to drop his LSP debut. Dark Apps about to come back with some shit. Insane Poetry is working on a new one. I mean, kind of. As far as heavy hitters for this label, I mean, it would be what they're doing at the gathering this year. The Fitty Shades of Snuff and shit, fucking. Oh, yeah, that's, it's so dope that a psychopathic actually put your whole entire record label on one stage together. It, it was good. Overall experience through a twist, that must have been like a really good mind blowing experience. It, it, it was. It was a lot of learning experience and shit. We had to learn to be on time, which, I mean, our load ends were hours earlier than usual. Shit. Everybody was so fucking on point that made me step the game up. I mean, it, we came back with a fucking list of like, okay, we gotta improve this, this, and this, and shit, and then it'll be great. And I, I'm thankful for the fucking experience. And I won't do this again, and if everything goes right, we'll be doing it again for the year now. For sure, dude. Like, it, it was just good to see your name on there. You, you've been working so hard. I mean, I've been down since nobody's left behind. Everything goes right, America. Between Snuff Legacy and this one and a couple of upcoming tours which we get to announce and shit, we're going to be spending for over four months in a row this year. There's a lot of crazy shit going on. I'm, I'm really happy where the list is headed this year. I actually have no complaints aside from the fact that I'm fucking in there with a constant like mental coma. But I'm happy to do it working this for a long time and shit. It's just going to keep going. Four quarters of live and all this shit contrary to popular belief. Oh yeah, dude. Especially with uh, you know Diabolic coming out with this stuff on your label, it's actually bringing it back. You know, Liquid Assassins on your label now, and it's, it's killer to see your label grow like that. Liquid got two releases coming out this year. He got his solo drop, and he's, and he's got the album Vegeta and shit that they knocked out, which I was just actually listening on the drive here and shit. That's amazing fucking shit. And they haven't even came up with the title for it yet, but but it is coming this year. Gino Cull shit, Liquid Assassin, fucking combined group project. Oh shit. Fully recorded, <laughs> and just needs to be mastered. Hard work gotta be done. And and what would you say your greatest accomplishment so far? Man, honestly, just national the, touring. Just the number of markets we hit, man. Like every tour we come back from, I fucking add some more dots and pins and shit to our map of the country. I mean, we've played over 30 states, and the fact that we are able to go on the road month after month after month and shit, and, you know, be full-time musicians in a genre that everybody claims has been dead for years. And yet, it's still alive. And yet, and yet, we're still doing it full time. Yeah, they're in it. Always puts out, uh, you know, for the independent act, they always you know, fight them out. Anyway, this is uh, Scum, Begalovers.net, Lyrical Snuff Productions. Been around for over 15 years. Shelling in Montana, as a matter of fact, and shit. We're out here with Pego Lovers representative. We're gonna be trying to get Scotty belligerently drunk in Texas, so if he's watching this, it's coming. <laughs> My man Anthony, thank you for filming, man. Appreciate thank it. Thank you, brother. Always.
and fucking do many more of these shows to come. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you.